Hey hooligans, I know Halloween is now over, but that doesn't mean we have to end the spooky vibes because horror movies are an all year type of entertainment. And that's why today we are talking about the top 10 best horror movies of 2024 so far. I know there are a few more movies coming out later this year, including Nosferatu, which I am personally very excited about. Also, full disclosure, there are a few horror movies that have gotten some attention that I haven't gotten around to seeing just yet, including Smile 2, which just most recently came out. I heard really good things about that. There's Oddity, there's Alien Romulus, Speak No Evil. I haven't seen those yet, but I feel like my list is still good, so don't click off just yet. Hear me out. And if you guys have seen those movies already, I am curious how you would rank those compared to the movies on my list today. I would like to give an honorable mention to I saw the TV glow. It didn't quite make my list today for a few reasons. I can definitely appreciate what went into that movie. I love the references to things like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and other horror movies. And I love the use of sounds and lighting in that movie. But I don't think it all came together cohesively well enough. I didn't also connect to the story or the themes. I don't think it was made for me, let's just say that, so for that reason, it's not on my list, but I can definitely see the vision. All right, so let's now actually get into my top 10 list, starting with In a Violent Nature. Now, this movie is also very ambitious because the whole point of it was, oh, what if we had a slasher horror movie in the perspective of the actual slasher? Now, they did follow this idea for a little bit until they decided to just completely deviate from it and follow the main character again. But I think one of the strengths of this movie is highlighting what it feels like to be alone in the woods and using sounds of branches cracking and leaves under your feet to convey this loneliness and this horrifying feeling. And as someone who grew up somewhere with lots of woods, I think that was a fear of mine all the time when I was in the woods. So that definitely resonated with me. I also think it had one of the most creative kills that I have seen in a horror movie and I will be thinking about that kill for a very long time. It's the death involving that girl doing yoga. If you guys have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. So in a genre just filled with slashers, I do think In a Violent Nature was able to kind of stand out from the crowd just a little bit, even though it didn't quite land what it was trying to do. But I'll definitely give them credit for trying and giving me a kill that I will remember for years. Okay, next up is Abigail. Now this movie was just dumb, but it was really, really fun. I loved that the main horror villain in this movie was a little girl. I thought it just made things kind of camp, like it was just so chaotic. The movie surprisingly kind of reminded me of like Knives Out, like it started off very silly vibes and then it became a mystery sort of and then it just became chaos. It's on my list purely because it was just fun and entertaining. I don't have that much more to say about it. Next up is Lisa Frankenstein. Now, now, I really like this movie. I know some people hated it, but I think it did exactly what it intended to be. It was definitely trying to replicate the vibes from the 80s, like Heathers and even the original Beetlejuice. It was very gothic, it was very camp, it was very fun. Even though it is horror, you're not supposed to really take it seriously at all. I thought the music was great, I thought the cinematography was great. I think a lot of movies nowadays are trying to take advantage of the nostalgia from the 80s, and we've even seen it in other horror movies such as Totally Killer, such as Fear Street, so this is nothing new, but I think it was still able to stand out and I remembered it as a fun movie. Next on the list is A Quiet Place Day 1. Now, if this were the original A Quiet Place, it would probably be in the top three movies, but because we've already seen two other movies, and I think, to be honest, ever since the first one has just gotten watered down each time, I think this concept needs to be pushed a little bit further, and this movie just stayed very safe. I thought we were going to explore more of the backstory of how these aliens got there. You know, I thought it was going to be a prequel for a reason, but it kind of just felt like another quiet place 
type of film for no reason. I did love Lupita Nyong'o's performance and her character. I thought it was very tragic, but it just felt kind of pointless. Like I was sitting there the whole time wondering where this was gonna go, and maybe it'll pay off in the next A Quiet Place movie with Joseph Quinn's character. But for now, I do think it was just like, a less good version of the other two A Quiet Place movies. I think a lot of the movies on this list are more independent, smaller horror movies, and they're able to be more experimental in the genre. So even though A Quiet Place is more safe compared to the other horror movies on this list. I think it was still very, very entertaining. And I think the story was pretty good. Okay, next up is, I don't even know what number this is, is Cuckoo starring Hunter Schaefer. I had no idea what to expect in this movie. I thought the advertising for this movie it was really well done. They made a lot of mystery surrounding what the plot was going to be about. I also thought Hunter Schaefer's performance was a standout in her career. And just in case I won't spoil what it is about for you guys if you want to watch it for yourself, but it had a very strong concept. And honestly, I feel like it leaned more towards being an action movie than a horror movie, but it definitely still had a horror element of course, especially with certain body horror stuff. But I will say it's still a little bit on the safe side. They could have done a little bit more. And speaking of doing more, doing maybe too much, is our next movie, Terrifier 3. Now, I do think Terrifier 2 is probably still the best movie out of the bunch so far, but the fact that this movie alone was able to break so many precedents in the horror world is just so crazy to me. Art the Clown is definitely a horror icon, but the business aside, I thought the movie itself was very, very entertaining. Of course, you know what you're gonna get into in a Terrifier movie is just so much blood, so many body parts, not on the body itself. But I think why it's a little bit lower than the other movies I will be mentioning is because we have kind of seen this concept already in the other two Terrifier movies. It just keeps getting watered down each time we get a sequel. But there were definitely still scenes and kills that were disgusting, that shocked me. And I think for that, it definitely gets more points. Also, Terrifier 3 might only be at number five on this list, but it might be number one on the funniest horror movie on this list, which is very interesting considering it's probably one of the grossest ones as well. Okay, next up is Long Legs. There was so much hype for this movie, and I think it was a little bit overhyped. I did make a review on Long Legs already, so you can check that out. But basically one of my critiques without spoiling the movie is the direction that they decided to go in at the end. There were obviously a lot of comparisons of this movie to Silence of the Lambs, so maybe it's partially my fault that my expectations were more so aligned towards that, where it was more like a crime thriller, but it is not what you expect. I still think the mystery aspect was very well done. I thought the cinematography was beautiful. It is definitely one of the most unique horror movies to come out recently. I also find it interesting that Long Legs himself is maybe going to become a Halloween icon as well, just because I've seen several people dress up as him already. Oh, and another thing about it is that after seeing movies like Terrifier 3, where it's so much excessive gore, I actually appreciate how Long Legs kind of was more reserved with the amount of gore that was shown. It relied more on horror that was not just blood, it was more atmosphere, it was more creep factor. So those were definitely things that it did very well. And before we get into my top three, here is just a gentle reminder to like and subscribe if you enjoyed my list so far. And if you haven't, then make sure you leave a scathing comment down below. Okay, so my number three pick for the best horror movie is It's What's Inside. And honestly, I wouldn't have put this in the horror category, but according to Google, it is a horror movie, so I don't know what to tell you. This is yet another movie with one of the most unique concepts that I've seen recently. When I watched it, I was like, that is brilliant. And this movie kind of came out of nowhere because it was on Netflix and it wasn't very well advertised. And I just watched it because my friend told me to, and I was like, huh, 
This was a really cool movie. It was super stylistic with very, very unique editing choices. At first, I didn't like it. I was like, I, I feel like this is a film student trying every kind of editing technique there is. But once I got used to it, it actually all came together. And I was like, there is a reason for why they chose the editing style to be like this. It's basically about a group of people partying and then they are able to switch bodies with each other. And then obviously chaos ensues when you can do that. It reminded me a little bit of talk to me, except instead of being possessed by a demon, it's everybody not being in control of their bodies. Everybody is in a different body. So it's super interesting, super unique. You should definitely check it out if you haven't seen it already. Like I said, I wouldn't put it under horror. It was honestly a little more lighthearted, maybe a little bit thriller, but it was more like comedy drama. Okay, next up is Strange Darling. Now, according to some places, this is considered a 2023 movie, but I don't think it was released in the US at least until 2024. So I'm going to consider it as a 2024 movie. This was also a very unique stylistic movie. I feel like that's been the trend recently in horror. There's been a lot more experimentation, a lot more ambition, and it's really, really exciting as a horror fan. But for Strange Darling, the movie is edited in a way where it's not linear progression. You kind of go back and forth in time and then everything connects in the end towards the middle. There is also a major twist in the movie, which I'm proud of myself for guessing it early on, but I will say I don't think it's entirely predictable. I think one of my complaints about the movie is the very ending or the epilogue. I don't think it was really necessary. I think this is one of the movies that would have benefited more of a ambiguous ending. Also similar to In a Violent Nature and one of the reasons why I liked both of these movies is that a lot of the movie takes place in the woods and something about just being in the woods is just very scary to me. And this movie also kind of reminded me of Long Legs where it started off very, very grounded and luckily for this movie, well, luckily for me, it did stay grounded pretty much the whole time in reality, which I really appreciated. But there were definitely inklings of supernatural elements. So that's an interesting overlap, I guess. There were also not a lot of characters in this movie. So a lot of it was focused on our two main characters. And I thought the acting was phenomenal. Honestly, the acting in these top five movies that I've mentioned are spectacular and yes i am including art the clown because his performance is honestly great and my number one pick for the best horror movie of 2024 i don't know if you've guessed it but it is the substance this movie also came out of nowhere i saw it come out i didn't review it because i was like what it, what even is this movie but then when it finally came out on digital i was able to check it out and i was absolutely blown away let me know if you guys want me to make a video specifically on the substance but if you are someone who likes body horror or is disturbed by body horror this movie takes that to the extreme it is almost all body horror but it's done almost in a tasteful way yes it's grotesque but it's kind of so grotesque that you can't take your eyes off of it i think it's heavily inspired by the thing i feel like even the title is inspired the substance very vague the thing is very vague but this movie also has a lot of things it wants to talk about in terms of themes and messages underneath all of the horror it talks about a woman's experience in general and then it talks about a woman's experience in hollywood and as an actress aging in the world of hollywood it was all very well done even though it wasn't subtle about it i was able to understand the messaging even though i am not a woman and i think that is one of the things it did better than say a movie like i saw the tv glow where there were also a lot of themes about different types of people that i wasn't able to connect to because i think it was a little too subtle but in the substance it was definitely able to convey these messages very well and even though it wasn't subtle right it 
didn't feel like it beat you over the head. This movie was two hours and 20 minutes long, which is really, really long for a horror movie especially, but I didn't feel like I was bored even a single second in this movie. I was so entranced, enthralled, hypnotized even by what was going on on screen. It was also very stylistic. I mean, it felt like you were living in reality, but like not really. You know how like La La Land is based on the real life LA, but it also had this hyper reality fantasy element to it. I got that with sub the substance as well. The acting was also so top tier. I mean, everyone, even the side characters had great moments. Also, as someone who has seen a lot of horror movies and has become desensitized to so much, especially after seeing things like Terrifier, this movie was able to shock me for the first time in a very, very long time. And a lot of times this movie, I found my jaw just on the floor because I was like, there's no way they're gonna be able to go even further, but then they keep taking it further every single time in the movie. I just love this movie. It honestly might be my favorite movie of the year. Is that too soon to say? But yeah, there are just not enough good things I can say about the substance so well made definitely you should check it out if you haven't already. Well, okay, so that was my list. How would you rank your favorite horror movies of this year? Let me know, I am very curious. And obviously when I say best movie, best horror movie, it is subjective. It is not based on how scary it is. It is my opinion. So please be respectful of each other, but still feel free to share your own opinions. That's all I have for you guys today, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Hey hooligans, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed that, then make sure to like and subscribe and check out some of these other videos available right now.